We have a new YouTube video out. Yes. BNC MAP, Brooke and Connor make a pot. Um, we had a lot of fun doing ceramics with um, an incredibly talented ceramist, Patrick Johnston, who we love and you will all love, no doubt, um, once you watch the video. So we encourage you to do that. Please um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would be awesome and so appreciated. And I hope you enjoy it. It's a it's a fun one, and we're out of the studio again. It's always fun to be in, like uh, in a different setting. I feel like that is fun. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the Brooke and Connor Make a Podcast. This is kind of Brooke and Connor Make a Podcast. Um, What is one of those dating shows where they're in rooms? The Rooms? Circle? I don't think that's a dating show, but you mean Love is Blind? Yeah, we're kind of just like on this remote situation, and it feels very... uh, Since we're together every time we do this, I feel like it's almost like Black Mirror that we're doing this like from different locations and on our computer. I know. I can't believe we've made it over two years without needing to go Zoom mode. I want to say, kiss your brain, Brooke, because Brooke and Connor do not miss a recording. No. There's not been a week where we haven't had a podcast come out. Not a damn week. A lot of people would crumble. A lot of people would crumble, Brooke. And really, we sh- we are top com- c- contenders for crumblers. And no, we have we not. Never faltered. We've never faltered. <laughs> Couldn't be us. No, you. So I've been saying. Um, I, I started. I uh, was talking to someone in New York yesterday, and they were saying some people live in Brooklyn and take the ferry every day for work at, on Manhattan. And I said, someone was like, "Oh, that'd be cool. Like, I get to take a boat to work." And I'm like, "I think it would get old on day three. You know, like that's a lot of like getting to the boat, getting on the boat, finding Mm -hmm. a seat. What if it's raining? Like if that's your commute, like there are a lot of downsides for taking the boat to work. And that could actually end up being a lot of work is taking the boat to work. So now I've started saying anytime it's a lot of effort and not like a lot of return. I've been saying like, I'm not taking the boat to work today. Well, what's crazy and like why I'll never understand how New York works is like to me, New York City is like the cityest city of all cities. Like yeah. that's a, that's a city take boats to work in that are you city. Just, are you just arriving to Times Square exists? We're doing boats. Are you just arriving from from across the pond? It's not why are you it's taking not a boat? Clicking for me. Yeah, it's not yeah. clicking for me. But I mean, God bless that city. God bless and God and bless that God city. Just got speed. back from there. You're still there. Just for context, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. you're on tour. Which is so exciting. I'm in LA. Just got back from New York. Um, How is everything? Walk me through it, Connor. Last I saw you, we were at Wicked. But I didn't really talk to you after your New York show. So I want to hear about that. And then we can kind of circle back. Yeah. um, We really really were moving and grooving. We, uh, I guess we even, we were in Philly last week. Had, Had four shows there. Um, and then came straight to New York on the train, but I didn't we say. Love so the when, train, by the way. We went obsessed, on the train. Obsessed with the train. Yeah. Um, Did you get your own seat? Yeah, me and Izzy sat next to each other on the train, which we Izzy. I'm so she, jealous. She's on the call somewhere, but I don't know how to do it remote. But so me and Izzy bought our tickets separately and didn't even chat about what seat we had, and then we ended up having the same seats. But I didn't think about the fact that like there was a chance we weren't gonna sit next to each other there aren't assigned uh, seats on the train yeah we had like 14 f and 14 d yeah i was never... just because we had to do like there was the normal train and then the business train and we had to take the business train because that's all they had we had the we took the business train i've never experienced the business train um yeah we took the, we took the business train to work was it fancy it was nice the seats reclined yeah um but I am sitting there, 
like everybody's commuting in. It was very clear from Philly in business business train. And my dad I was that three times a week. Isn't that crazy? Oh my god! People put a lot of effort into going to work. Could never be me. I'm not taking the boat to work. No, left at like five every day and got back at uh, way after seven. That's bad. Hor- like horrible. Um, but yeah, so I we were on the train. It was kind of seemed it was delayed, and everyone was mad. We were like, "It's fine." Mm-hmm. I don't like the train, the idea of the train. I don't like being underground. That scares me. I don't like um, how fast it goes. That scares it's me not too. Underground. We at went all, through some really. tunnels, and I always panic when we go through uh-huh. tunnels. I'm like, "How long?" And then we got stuck in a tunnel, and I was like, "Is genuinely pitch black out there?" Like if, and then I was looking yeah. around. You know, when you are stuck for a second, you you look around, and you're like. Are these the people that like are we're gonna band together? Mm-hmm. And like, is that that person's like the strong mm-hmm. man that like fights stuff, whatever's in this tunnel? And then like, who are we gonna eat? Who are we gonna turn on first? See, for um, me, I look around and I'm like, is there anybody that I could fall in love with? Like, is there gonna be a romance that could happen? Oh, yeah. Well, you, that's an option too because like, consider like if there was a a fallout outside of the tunnel and you guys were actually protected because the train broke down and you're stuck in the tunnel. Like that's someone that you'd need to carry on man timed with. You mean like an apocalypse outside of the tunnel, but you're the only yeah. one safe because you're in the tunnel. Yeah. I always think about like, Oh, if something happened and this is like my lost group group. Yeah. Like who would I start a podcast with? If, if right. everybody, everybody else died and then that's I need to find question. someone on this train. Yeah, you're thinking carry on mankind. I'm thinking, how am I going to get myself back behind a mic? I think there's like three key players you need to identify. One, who am I going to eat? Two, who am I going to start a podcast with? Three, who am I going to procreate with? Exactly. Nailed it. Um, Mm -hmm. So we get to New York. I'm like, this is awesome. I love trains. There's no, kind of bad. There's no security, but like there's, you know, it's, it's so much easier than an airport. Totally. And then we get there and we're walking through and I make direct eye contact with, with like someone going to work. And I, I caught myself in the mirror and my hair was like Long Island medium fluffed up because I've been like sleeping and I wasn't wearing a hat. I was like, I need to put a hat on. This is gross. I'm like being a slob. I think I'm in sweats. And it's like people are going to work in suits and stuff. And I was like, it's embarrassing. I need to clean up, have some decorum in Penn Station. The business and train so I, especially. And 14 and app as well. Yeah. And so me and Izzy make our way with our giant uh care our checked bags. Like my away bag is bigger than my hotel room. Oh, how did that fit on the train? We put it behind our seat, like it's in between two chairs. Me and Izzy had the same size, gigantic checked bag. But so we get our bags, we get off. We obviously have a, an additional bag that's got like all of our equipment in it that we recorded with. Philly and the mics right now and we get off and I'm like I gotta put a hat on because I looked disgusting so I reach back to my backpack we've now made it up two flights of stairs we're in the lobby of Penn Station and I go I left my backpack on the train and it has my wallet with my ID and all my credit cards obviously and then my backup ID because I always lose my ID my passport is in my backpack and I'm like okay that's really concerning but it also has my laptop it also has every check from every show that I've done in it. And I was like, someone's going to like really score because there's no way that's there. And I go up to me and Izzy. Now I'm white in the face. I look like the Long Island medium. I'm sweating and I'm panicking now. And I go up to this help desk and I was like, hey, I don't know what to do. I left my bag there. And they go, what train? And I go, 15 or whatever and they go that's it's just sitting there you just got <laughs> up like go back and get your bag yeah so then I'm, i think they stop in new york for quite a bit yeah because it's like oh, the big drop-off pickup and mm-hmm. then i think it goes to boston after but i was like oh my god why didn't i go and me and izzy had walked further once we found out my bag was still on the train instead of like turning i should could have just turned around and, and i did i ran all the way back down um, got on the train, pushed through everybody, looking like like decrepit. Now I'm sweating on top of everything else, and I didn't wear deodorant that morning because we got out so early. Um, 
but I got my bag. And so that like after after you've already accepted that you were going to have to go to Boston, somehow fit a Boston train ride mm-hmm. and back into well, your Well, there trip. would have been about like 18 stops before you got to Boston too. So my bag wouldn't have been like having already been like, oof, I, okay, I have to move forward. I, that already happened. And then getting it back, it was like, nothing can happen the rest of this mm-hmm. trip that could affect me. I'm, I'm good. I'm thankful I got my bag. So that was our train ride. It was awesome. Um, hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, MeUndies. Underwear drawers are like the wild west of wardrobes. There's no rhyme or reason to them. Anything goes. You've got pairs from three birthdays and two Christmases ago, pairs from five different brands with five different fits. When you open that drawer every morning, you have no idea what to expect. Now that we've felt the buttery soft comfort of MeUndies, my other pairs have got to go because MeUndies is all I reach for. I'm hooked and honestly, I, I feel off if I try to wear anything else. You guys obviously know my, my relationship with my underwear. Um, I've gotten a couple fun pairs of, of me undies. Actually, it was like one of my first pair of like gifting I've ever, I ever gotten. I still have them. I travel with them. They're really comfy. Um, and the prints are cool. I know you have, you, you have a favorite pair of me undies, right, Brooke? I sure do. My Spider-Man you. undies. Where I wear them every day. Mm-hmm. From all black classics to fun, expressive prints, me undies has a look for everyone. Plus, they come in sizes extra small to a 4XL, guaranteeing a flattering cut for everybody. Me Undies isn't just about underwear. Explore the lounge collection featuring comfy joggers, hoodies, onesies, and more. And their Move Me Activewear collection is the softest activewear on the market. Me Undies signature fabric is as soft as a warm hug from your favorite sweater. They're breathable, stretchy, and oh so comfy, making it ideal for all day wear. They use sustainably sourced materials and work with partners that care for their workers. And if you're not happy with your first pair of MeUndies, it's on MeUndies. Get 20% off your first order, plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash BNC. That's MeUndies.com slash BNC for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside. Now, yeah, and then you got here right after, and then that was the night we went to Wicked. Yes. We have not debriefed this at all. Mm-mm. It was... I mean... Did you like it? So I went into it with a bad attitude and a, mm-hmm. and a closed mind because I was like, I'm going to go have some wine and it's uh-huh. just going to be like this thing. Walk I was, me through the attitude. The attitude I got there, I was like, okay, let's do this thing. I was asking Izzy. I'm like, how long is, are we talk- oh, talking here? Oh, that bad attitude. And it was a bad. Yeah, no, I was like, how long is this going to be? Then pretty much right away. My energy shifted. I was like, Do you remember oh. the point? What was happening on stage when there was that shift? I mean, it was pretty early on, honestly. Like when after that first number, do they call it a number? Yeah, that, that could work. That's you weird that they call it a number because it's a song. It's anything but a number. It's the furthest sure. thing from math that you could be. Like, I would disagree. What's the furthest I feel thing? Like music from is math? made up of like beats and tempo and pitch, and those are all numbers at, at their core. We're going down to the the core of beats. Yeah. I mean, you um, brought me there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it was such a new experience. I think like going into something like that with that bad attitude, like expectations were low. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, but I, I don't love musical mo- movies, you know? Right. Um, and so I didn't think I would like that, but being there and they're physically acting it out like it kind of, it was fun. It was like high energy. It was engaging. There was always something to look at. And mm-hmm. for someone with really severe ADHD, it was it was really stimulating for me. Now, I know that some people do do like shrooms or get high. That would have been overstimulating for me. Yeah. I could not imagine. I think you can drink for sure. I lo- like, I was loving my wine. Yeah, you were loving it. You were loving your wine. But I can't imagine Doing a drug that could induce paranoia. Right. Especially at Wicked. Yeah. Because it is um, like, it's a little spookier than I remember. And I just realized, like, I thought maybe I went when I was like 10 or 11, because I had only seen it once before. I went when I was seven. I went with like the original cast when it just opened and it's 20 years old. So that's 20 years ago. That's crazy. Which is crazy. Uh, um, I'm surprised I wasn't terrified by the monkeys. Who are the much scarier are the, than I remember. Those monkeys should be played by 
children, not adult men. And they Those also monkeys look, were horrible. They don't look anything like monkeys. They it's look like, like there's Satan. no resemblance to a monkey. Yeah. No, that's really like disturbing. A, that's a creature. Oh, when they were everywhere. Those monkeys it's were everywhere. It's a creature of the underworld. Yeah. No, it was. And then they grow wings and it's just like this is not this is not a this is not a play for children at all. No, it was um, like scary a lot scarier than I remember. But it was good. And then um my friend Natalie, who I think I talked about her before on the podcast, but Natalie Ortega, who used to do my shows with me and play, like I think I talked about her. She plays the guitar and she's just like writes songs. Look her up on Instagram if you want. She just came up or came out with a music video for, for her song. I forget what it's exactly called, but it's about her boyfriend being five eight. And it's I think it's called like My Boyfriend on a Step Stool or something. And she's it's really so tall. it's she's tall. Yeah, she's taller than him. Um her boyfriend's also a comedian. And she was she got a role on Wicked. So and it was like a it was just it's one of the big roles. So um, she had like a full song to herself and she's so talented. And then just like long shot, I asked like, Hey, you think we're coming to see your show? Uh, do you think we you could sneak us backstage? And no hesitation. Yes. Meet me after the show on the side door. And so everyone's like kind of waiting for, for the cast to come out and like get signed their stuff. And she pulls us in. That was so cool. And takes us backstage Shows us there's three floors of props and dressing rooms, and it was just really cool. That was that was awesome. No, like I fully owe you an apology because when you kept saying like, "Oh, like no, my friend is in Wicked," I just was not taking you seriously at all. But like, I can't stress this enough. Connor's friend like was in Wicked like so much. Like she was fully like she was Nessa, Alphabet's sister. Like she was awesome, so talented, sweetest girl in the world. By the way. But like fully one of the main characters, like I don't even think you realize how big of a deal that was. No, I I mean, I was after seeing the production, I was like, oh, wow. Uh, like, like, oh, I, wow. Like, I do not like no pressure. If you can't pull this off, I would. Totally like your friend is in Wicked Wicked on Broadway, Broadway. I, that's insane. No. And she's on the poster, too, which is like, also cool. Like crazy. She was so good. Oh, um, it was so much fun. Do you have a favorite song that you remember and also like maybe a favorite moment in the plot? Oh, crap. I had like I know there are moments you've seen The Wizard of Oz and there are moments in Wicked that kind of are like brain busters, kind of revealing more about The Wizard of Oz that you just kind of never thought. So did any of those blow your mind a little? When I was able to figure out that Wicked is not The the Wizard of Oz, Mm -hmm. which was like halfway through, I was like, wait, at intermission, we had had that discussion. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, where's Dorothy? And you guys were like, no, this is like the lead up to Wizard of Oz. So all of the times when it was like kind of like foreshadowing, like, oh, they gave away the shoes and then Dorothy's Mm -hmm. in that like little dungeon on the stage. I was like, oh, I get it. Okay, I see. And they see like the house spinning on the projector. Mm -hmm. Um, Like all of those times I was like, oh this is like a thinker not a stinker so yeah that was fun and correct me if i'm wrong but i really saw the wheels turning in your head when we saw bach spoiler alert bach turn into the tin man that's when i think it really kind of sunk in yes. for you. like oh like this is kind of really leading up to the Wizard i of see Bob. yeah no, giving us the backstory that, that all started to piece together too and like mm-hmm. the lion cub i got the lion yep. cub easily um yeah, the Tin Man I thought would have like a better origin story. Like he was just like all of a sudden the Tin Man like, for no reason. Oh, for like, me, I think that the Cub had the worst origin story. Like he was literally just like a Cub, and he was and a then, little scared. So that, hence he became the yeah. cowardly lion. Like I thought that was the weakest. But the Tin Man, did you get like Nessa? Um, was doing some sort of spell on him. To try to get him to stay so like he wouldn't leave her, but she like hurt him and like something was going wrong with his heart. And then Alphaba tried to save him because no good deed goes unpunished. Right. And she made it so that he could live without a heart. But the only way to live without a heart was to be the tin man. To be made of tin. I feel like there's other ways to live without a heart and not I be think that they man. the thing is though they they needed him to be the tin man. Like the story's already written. The end is already written. Right, right. So they're kind of working backwards. 
like if he fell into like a metal factory or something like that would make more sense for him to just like be a tin man. And you know, that's something you could pitch. I just think that maybe we could have put a little more thought into it. Like the lion cub Anderson, he was just like stuck in a cage and he was like, uh, like that vibe of being tested on animals, that kind of thing. Sure. But, um, Hey guys, we're going to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode. Quince. Imagine upgrading your wardrobe with luxury sensibles at unbeatable prices. That's going to be a reality for you because shopping can be so draining, but Quince makes it easy to pick out great pieces for everyone. Quince is here to transform the way you shop with a range of high quality items priced within reach. Like 100% Mongolian cashmere sweaters for $50, organic cotton sweaters, washable silk tops, and timeless 14 karat gold jewelry. The best part? All Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm obsessed with my boyfriend. Hoodie from Quince. Yeah. Not only is it super soft, but it's such a high quality hoodie that didn't cost me an arm and a leg. Indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash BNC for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash B-A-N-D-C to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash BNC. Yeah, 10 man, I think. Was there any other? Oh, no. The other one was uh, the scarecrow I saw. Was there any, is there, so there's the lion, the scarecrow, the tin man. Yeah. Those are the three musketeers. The three musketeers. Okay. Why are there no, like, there's no women in the, in the creatures. Right. Well, yeah, that's true. There's Dorothy, but. There's no female creatures. So I love, like, the part of Wicked that I love is that, like, Dorothy is, like, so annoying. Like, you really never think about that when you're watching. the. Oh, Dorothy's a piece of work. Like, she could just, like, leave, like. She is such a nuisance to our queen, Alphaba. Yeah, I, I like that the whole twist of the whole thing was like, oh, Alphaba's not evil. Oh, God, no. Then no. Right, they, yeah. They really, it's, you needed context in that situation. Not only is she not evil, but like probably like the most selfless person in all of Oz. That kind of just goes down to show you there's, there's his truth, there's her truth, and then there's the truth. Mm-hmm. Always. That's exactly true, Connor. Um, I just remember the story was finally to told. Speaking about uh, the lion cub being trapped in a cage. On Sunday, I was walking through the West Village or or something or Soho here, and I was walking past a Mark Jacobs store. And mm-hmm. There was a bunch of protesters out there. And I had my headphones in, and I was like listening to something, and I'm walking past, and I could hear them, but I'm like all the way past them, like a half block, and I'm like. Are they behind? I, they still hear them through my headphones. Are they behind me? They're following me with phones, being like, "Puppy killer, shame on you!" Did you just walk out of Every- Mark Jacobs? No. And everyone in front of me, I walked around them, but everyone in front of me is looking at me, and they're like, "Shame on you, puppy killer!" They have all their phones out sideways. They're like, all this stuff, and I realize the C- the CEO of Mark Jacobs is hiding behind me. So that no one sees him. And I'm like trying to get out of the way. And they're following me. Puppy killer. Shame on you. And I was like, I am. I never killed a puppy. Actually. Um, Damn, Mark of Mark Jacobs. Scary. Could you could you maybe. I turned. He turned with me. I was like, all right, this is not. This How were you able to there. identify him as Mark Jacobs? They were yelling his name. It wasn't Mark Jacobs. His name was Eric. And so oh, Eric, I no, typed in Eric Mark Jacobs and it said he was the CEO. I don't know his last name, but like the way they were trying to get up, up his ass and he was trying to get away from them. I was trying to get away from the whole situation. And, and there's a group of people that think that I am a puppy killer now. Okay. Well, you, we know your heart. Never killed a puppy. No. And, and you never will. No. I won't. I don't even see that kind of in the books. I don't see it in the books either, but no, um, it's just not in the books. No. And yesterday I saw Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh. He's in, in town. What was the context? I was I had a meeting at this at this hotel and 
there were some people outside, like all just like it looked like people waiting f- for someone to come out. And I was like, I, I was in the middle of a meeting. I was like, I really just got to see what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Are they waiting for me? They weren't. Um, so I go out and I ask the door guy, I was like, what are they waiting for? And they were like, oh, Jake Gyllenhaal. And as he said that, Jake Gyllenhaal walked past me in his car, like pulled up and he just like walked right out and got in his car. But it's because he has that movie coming out tonight that I'm actually going to. What movie? Roadhouse. I've never even heard of it. I think it's a movie about boxing, which I haven't seen. A, I haven't seen a good flick about boxing in a, in a minute. Is that so. not the new Zach, Iron Claw? What is it? Iron Claw. Is that, is that wrestling? Maybe. Um, I still haven't seen that. I need to see Iron Claw as well. I don't know. Me too. I Apparently seen it. it's like devastating. Yeah. I'm kind of like out on devastating movies right now. I could go. I could go for one. Maybe, maybe I'll watch it. De- well, I guess I'm going to go see this, this, this movie tonight. So I'll let you know how it is. You're going to the Jake Gyllenhaal movie tonight. I'm going to the premiere tonight. Yeah. Oh, I missed that. I missed that detail. Um, cause so I was like, oh my God, cool. Jake Gyllenhaal. And they were like, that's where you're going tonight. So, um, yeah, that'll be good. I'm, I, I'm trying to decide if I should stay and watch. I feel like I should. Cause it's, I think it's going to be a big movie, but this boy hasn't slept. Oh, you must be like completely drained. No, it's it's so f- freaky. Like I'm not tired at all. Okay, I can't. I can't relate. I truly probably slept one hour each night in New York, just due to the sounds of the city. Not only the sounds of the city, but also the sounds of my hotel floor of like people literally every five seconds like getting divorced. Literally being like, you will not come in this room, screaming at the top of their lungs, slamming the doors, locking people out. Like, like, un I've never experienced anything like it. Oh, no way. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Heavy duty melatonin couldn't couldn't keep me out. Like. I truly I I don't know how you're doing it. I I don't know. I I have a hard time sleeping when it's quiet. I like a little bit of brown noise. I don't love screaming and sirens. Screaming and sirens are are hard. I do like the the purr of of cars driving. That's fine. I could get on board with the purr. It's no, more I, of the I, harsher I, sounds that I was dealing with. I know. I um, I got hot the first night, so I opened my window and I was like, "Whoa!" I actually can't do. I can't do full open window right now. Yeah. Um, I need to do closed window and just a hum of the background noise. But I do. I can't sleep. Sometimes even in L.A., L.A. is pretty quiet, like obviously compared to here. But um, L.A. sometimes I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's quiet. Oh, no. L.A. is literally an oasis compared to New York. I know. I uh, I love it, though. I'm like loving every second. Do you want to see my sandwich I got? I, I think I showed you. But do you, the yeah, people, I do. The people watching, do you want to see my sandwich? I can only eat half at a time, and I actually didn't even eat half. I just want to show you guys what's on it. Damn! How many? How many beers? How do you fit that in your mouth? Um, you kind of like yeah around it, but that's a sign of a really good sandwich. If like you can't decide where to go in first, I just like love to be able to get a bite of everything in my mouth. So I would prefer that they make it a little bit smaller. Yeah, they they can make it smaller, but not the Italian special. No, no, no. They got a, What's they, the new Italian special? It's everything, like everything in the entire deli. This is from mm-hmm. FICO's in the West Village, which is my favorite place to get a sandwich. And it's also like I figured out how to order. So that's the only place like really in the city where I am I go in with a, a, my, my chest out because I'm like, I know how to do this. I know how to operate. Mm. You know when there's a huge crowd and you're like, I don't want to cut anyone, but also like I, I need to get my order in. And also, oh, is that your order? I, this, this is the only place where I know how to like walk in make eye contact, order, and pick it up, and I'm out. That's always nice to know your way around a place. I literally, like, I woke up every morning and walked to get a slice of pizza at Joe's Pizza. <laughs> like, that is the thing that I miss the most about the East Coast, especially New York. Like, that is something that just cannot be replicated anywhere else. No, no, it, it can't. Also, I was talking to someone yesterday. My little sister was in town the whole the whole time I was here, which is cool. Um, we hung out with her and her boyfriend and her That's boyfriend's sweet. family. Um, and I was talking to them last night and they're like, we walked six miles today. And I was, I was like, I could walk six miles in a day in LA, but it would be like, it would be like an event, you know, on the like, highway. 
there's no yeah there's no where to walk like i walk a half mile to and from to get a coffee every morning or like you know a couple times a week but here if i walked a half mile i could i could drop off laundry yeah. dry cleaning i could get a coffee i could get mugged and then i could get my my palm red and then be home in an hour which is crazy and i kind of like that stimulation too you also, do so what's much the like science behind like if i walk an hour in new york it's like a second has gone by and if i walk an hour in la the whole day has been wasted i think it's because it's so stimulating there's something happening mm-hmm. all around you and right. it's a grid system the streets make like almost gaslight you into thinking you're walking less because people will be like it's 14 blocks i'm like that's two miles it's also like when you read a book and there's like a bunch of short chapters yeah so it like you, it makes you think you're flying through it and that's kind of like the short blocks too where yeah. LA, it's just like a long street after long street. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, guys. We want to take a quick break to thank one of today's sponsors, Embark. Um, you know, me and Brooks, affinity, obsession, addiction to our young man and young woman, Max and Frankie. They're so special. Our best friends. And we want them to live as long as possible, obviously. That's why I'm excited to be partnering with Embark, the provider of the most accurate dog DNA test on the market and the ultimate gift for every occasion. The results strengthen your bond with your dog and lets you know them way better. It's always so hard finding good gifts that are personal for someone, but the happiness that an Embark dog DNA test can give a loved one is unmatched. Yep. Um, I'm constantly getting asked, like, what kind of dog is Max? What kind of dog is Max? And, And I sent in my DNA with Embark. It's really easy. I had to swab Max's like inside of his mouth. He didn't care, which I thought was interesting, but I'm looking forward to getting those results. That's going to be fun. Our producer Ryan is still obsessed with his results for his dog, Remington. His mixed ancestry shows six different breeds. The biggest being Shih Tzu and also Dachshund. He's also got some Chihuahua and Poodle in him. Um, You know, my amazing experience with adopting Max. They called him a Border Collie. Um, he's not at all. And people with border collies get mad when I say that. Because he couldn't look less like a border collie. So I'm excited to get the, those like actual legit results. Pet parents can learn more about their dog with the most accurate dog DNA test on the market. Such as their dog's breed mix and genetic health risks. And bark screens for more than 250 plus. Find and connect with other dogs who share their dog's DNA with the world's first canine relative finder. How cool would it be to find Max's long lost cousins? It would be really, really cool. I would love that. I saw a lot of comments last time we spoke about Embark. And so many people said Max looks like their dog, which is like insane. A lot of people are like, I. what if we had Max's siblings? They could totally be related at some point, maybe down the line, because mm-hmm. uh, there's a relative finder that Embark has too. And we just want to thank EmbarkVet.com for supporting our show. Go to Embark. BarkVet.com to get free shipping and save $50 on a breed and health test kit with promo code BANDC. Again, Embark is the ultimate gift for every occasion. Although you don't need an occasion to get to know your dog better. Get the dog DNA test that's trusted by millions. Right now, Embark has a limited time offer on their breed and health test for our listeners. Go to EmbarkVet.com to get free shipping and save $50 with promo code BANDC. Visit EmbarkVet.com and use promo code BNC to save $50. Today. Oh, I was also going to tell you this. This is funny. So yesterday, um, Sunday was Lee, Lee Ferrickson's day, I always say, but it's St. Patrick's Day. Oh, my day. God. I'm so sorry I didn't reach out. It's okay. Hinga dinga dargan. <laughs> um, so I, I didn't go out like for St. Patrick's Day, but I guess in the city, it's like a huge deal. I had no idea what I was I had no idea. Leaving the hotel on that, on that Saturday. Oh, the parade, like all that stuff. It was like SantaCon. Like that was the vibe it was here. Everyone's and it's out. all like young. And I can't believe this is coming out of my mouth. Like it's young kids. <laughs> it's children. It's no, like I 21, that- 22, 23. Like that's like not my, that's not my community anymore. I know. No, I was going to say, you know, I didn't, I didn't even go, bro. <laughs> like, no, it's I'm not disgusted. for us. It's not for us. No, I, yeah, no, I, I didn't, I wasn't involved at all. I think my sister and like all of them, like that whole group had gone. Um, and so when they finished down there, they came up and like hung out with me and we had fun. We did like, we did a bar and we just like stayed up and 
the parents were there too and we like sang at well at some hour at this bar we were at they started playing like hit after hit like like group singing songs like sweet caroline good for you by olivia rodrigo like all of these really fun like everyone and it was such a blast and then i was like whatever i stayed out i stayed out kind of late i sang at the top of my lungs i i danced i laughed i cried i sweat i bled and then i was like ah, oh, whatever i don't have anything tomorrow morning then i get a call at 10 a, at like 9 48 a.m because i had the hot ones video shoot you know the wing interview where you eat the yes wings. it's um, not what's that guy's name it's not Paul with him. It's, it's not, not with Sean, the bald man. Sean. Sean. It's I not know. with him, right? No, that's for like famous people. This is this one's more like for content online and it's like fun, low key. And you're just alone uh, in the room? No, there's still like 12 people looking at you. But not, you're just on screen alone. But you're just on screen and there's someone that kind of like asks additional questions. But I <laughs> I uh was obviously so I got I got a call at 948. They're like, hey, we're here. Your thing's at 10. I was like, Oh, okay, I'm in bed. You know, I was like, oh, I can sleep in tomorrow. So I get up. I'm like hungover in a weird way. Like I just didn't sleep good. I wasn't hungover from like getting wasted or anything. I was just like hungover, like oh, I didn't get such. good sleep. And it was early. Yeah, I'm still jet lagged, honestly, from being out here. People don't and take I- it jet lag seriously enough. It is a disease going from the West Coast to the East Coast. Like you should we should be given two to six days to recover when you think about like a 9 a.m being 6 a.m then you're like oh you know an 8 a.m here is five that's crazy it's horrible Um, so i i get all the way there like i look like shit on this video that's gonna come out i was like you know because it was so cold i was like bloodshot eyes because i biked there too because i couldn't get a car so i'm biked there i'm kind of sweating a little bit i'm white as a ghost these wings are hot Brooke, they aren't kidding. They are hot. So now I was going to say, like, I, you know me, like, I can't even have sriracha. Like, I'll go to the hospital. Like, it's too much to bear. I watch these guys eat these wings and I'm like, you guys are so weak. Like, I can do this in my sleep. No, I know. (laughs) I was really like, ah, whatever. I'm a little hungover. I haven't eaten anything else. Like, let me just do these hot wings. Brooke, I'm eating them. I'm like, I need milk. I need milk. I was like, from the first wing. From the first wing, because it wasn't like wet wings that we're used to, you know, like I was, it was like dry, dusted dry spice. Rub. Yeah. And um, I was like, okay, a cu- what's a couple wings on an empty stomach after drinking on St. Patrick's Day? Okay. So now we got the wings. Then I'm begging for milk. I'm about to cry. I'm like, I need the milk. One glass wasn't enough. So I had two glasses. I said, you got to leave the carton over and that's here. And cow's milk? Cow's milk, whole milk. So now I've got whole milk. I got four, four hot spicy wings in my stomach and then it wouldn't go away. And then right in the middle of the interview, Brooke, because I'm my tear, I have tears in my eyes. I'm like, I need to wipe the tears out of my eyes. Wiped, wiped the hot, did not wash my hands in the middle of the interview, wiped it into my eyes. So then my eyes were like this. I'm kind of, I'm like, I need to help me. And it sounds like when that comes out, it's really going to look like I'm being dramatic, but I was in, like, I was literally like, am I going to be the first person that dies on hot ones? I was scared and I eat a lot of sriracha. Thank God. Like it didn't affect my stomach for some reason. So it was just like more like of a pain in the throat area. It like did my, it did everything. And then everything I touched, even on the outside of my skin was just like on my lips were bright red. My eyes were just dumping out. I thought I was going to go blind for a second. It's so scary. I I really like could never, even though it looks easy. I I'll never like I have who who is a who is a ghost pepper wing benefiting in any way? No, no one likes that. No one's like, mm, like I love maybe like if you're kinky, like a kinky eater, you would like. like who was really that one kinky. person on hot wings that was like, this is like who like, know literally you're... didn't flinch. I remember someone like that, but I can't remember. It was like a someone you wouldn't expect, like a young woman. Yeah, it was a young woman. Was It wasn't Jenna Ortega, was it? That would make sense. That would make sense. I feel like that was someone that didn't make sense. Did I show you how chat my lips were? Uh, are they bleeding? Look, I'm going to show you this picture of, of my lips. Trigger warning. Chopped lips. I don't know. It happens to me when I go from 
the East Coast to the West Coast. No matter what I do, I had Vaseline caked on, Aquaphor caked on, lip treatments caked on. And this was, I had just, I was sitting in my bed and I smiled at a TikTok. Oh, no. Is oh, that no. not these like literally cracked? You could hear it. You could hear the pop. Yeah, that looks like a Halloween costume bleeding out of your lip. Thank God for Blistex medicated lip ointment. <laughs> Hello? Did you hang out with me again? <laughs> Maybe I don't like you getting confused. I can't I'm on the figure phone. It out. Just so everybody knows, if if you're listening, I don't know, we'll probably edit that out, but um, we had to like rig up headphones and laptops and everything to do this remote. So I'm on the phone with Brooke in my headphones. My mic is plugged into my computer. The audio from my computer on Zoom is going into my microphone, and I'm hearing Brooke's voice through my phone. I'm also hearing my voice two seconds after I talk. So that's been like a real growth moment for us. Yeah. And I keep thinking like, oh, why am I on the phone? And I keep hanging up. Are you sitting on your phone or something? I can't hear you. No, I'm not. Oh, there we go. Now I can hear you. But my phone's been in the same place the whole time. So weird. But we did it. Brooke and Connor make a podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Um, what is the first thing you would do if you had an extra hour in your day, Brooke? Um, you know, Connor, there's a lot of things that I could get into with an extra hour. Yeah. For example, a nap, um, an extra, that would be awesome. an extra 60 pages or so of my book. You're doing a, a page nice, a minute. A nice walk. It's nice to get some outside time. Exactly. Well, you know, a lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. I'm, and the question is time for what, right? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. Therapy has given me the tools to navigate my relationship with myself and others, fostering resilience and a healthier mindset. It's a judgment-free space where I've learned to prioritize self-care, set boundaries, and build lasting positive changes. It's an investment in yourself that pays dividends in personal well-being and a more fulfilling life. If you're thinking of starting therapy, get BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash BNC today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash BNC. Um, I have to confess something to you. Confess. Okay, so as you guys know, based off of last week's episode, Connor met Susu. Yeah. Who obviously is addicted to you. I have not stopped thinking about her for even a second. And obviously had to shove money in the Connor's hand <laughs> the second that she saw him. And also me, but more importantly, Connor. You left your money, so I took it to give to you, of course. Um, but something had happened in that at the end of Little Shop of Horrors, which I saw this weekend, which stars um, Darren Chris, who, if you don't know, I'm like completely obsessed with. That's mm -hmm. why I went to see Little Shop. He was in Glee. He's in um, Very Potter musicals and a lot of things that I love. Just addicted to him beyond belief. The show was so good. Can't say enough good things about Darren Chris. Anyway, he came out at the end to do a little spiel for Broad like Broadway Cares, which is an organization that helps people with AIDS. And he was like, we're taking donations. Um, and he was like saying like, oh, if you donate this, you'll get this. If you donate this, you'll get this. I, of course, did not care what I got. I just wanted to donate to the organization because that's a cause near and dear to my heart. And just that would make me happy to just donate to it. I did have to give all the money that Susa had given us to the organization. I understand. Um, in exchange for a signed playbill by the cast that we can absolutely share. Thank you. That's, that's thoughtful. I don't I think that's worth every penny. Yeah. So our money has, penny. our money has gone to a, to an amazing cause. What was the cause? Broadway cares. What's, what do they care about? What does Broadway care about? AIDS. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tax. That's a tax write off for us. And, but that's not why we did it, Connor. No, no. Also, 
The next show I went to, Merrily We Roll Along, starring you know who, of course, Jonathan Mm -hmm. also came out and did the same spiel at the end of that show, because I think this is the week or last week that they do fundraising for it. And I had no choice but to donate a a handsome sum to him as well. You had your twos were tied. You had to. Oh, and you want to hear something really weird. Yes. Um, they were also giving away like a huge prop from the show and they were doing a live auction. And so I had this point had given all my money, um, all the money that was in my pocket, but, um, it was this, there's a scene in the play where Jonathan is writing on a typewriter and then eventually Daniel Radcliffe's character like gets to see what's written on the typewriter. So Jonathan like writes something to fuck with him every show. And the show he'd written, like, you're so hot or something. And they were selling that piece of paper for the auction. And so the girl next to me won it for the small price of $1,700. And it turns out I was had to watch um, cable TV to fall asleep. And I never watched cable TV. And it turns out I had I saw the girl who was sitting next to me who won the paper on my television, George Lopez's daughter. Oh, yeah. In the show Lopez vs. Lopez, which I never would have seen were it not for cable television. Well, so you were sitting next to George Lopez's daughter. The one and only. Wow. And she has that sweet, sweet piece of paper. And not only that, she's donated to an amazing cause. That's really special. And Meryl Streep and Martin Short were there. No way. Wait, did not see them because I had my eyes on the prize in front of me. But they were two rows behind me. Wow. Star-studded evening. It was a star-studded event. Yeah. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. And, and Ed- I did get spit on. Yes. You got a globbed. You got globbed. Yeah, I got globbed. That's great. That's yeah, great news. It was, it was awesome. Proud yeah. of you. Thank See, you. We, we're doing big things in New York in such a short amount of time. We really are. So in summary, happy to um, Venmo you back that $100. Or oh no, we could just let I'm, that. Live, I'm gonna live I'm with writing, Broadway cares. I'm writing it off for Broadway cares. Yeah, one hundred. And if everyone feels compelled to donate to Broadway cares, I would encourage you to also do that. We would implore implore you to. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, great. That's great news. I'm just. Oh my god, have you seen that woman from Harry Potter doing those interviews? But I, I think it's so funny. I what know. a bitch. I, I think I, it's so funny. I knew you would. I'm like like up in arms angry about it. Like, where what? do you get off? And like, who are they hurting? If if they want to have a Harry Potter themed wedding, if that makes them so happy, who are you? As by the way, I have no idea who you are. I don't recognize you whatsoever. Who are you one of the- to crush someone's dreams? I know she's in the movie. And guess what? I've seen those movies 50,000 times. I do not recognize her. I feel like I did, but also I might have imagined. I mean, like, I could recognize her once someone explicitly tells me who she is and which scene she was in, but I'd never know who she is. And guess what? It's however many years later, and she's still talking about it. So who's the loser now? Yeah. um, Anyway, just like for summary, she says that people should really let it go if they're still obsessed with Harry Potter, which I'm just like, clearly you haven't let it go because you're still getting off on that fame right now. That's all you have going for you right now is trashing Harry Potter. I thought uh, the part I thought was really funny was I guess she was invited to be in a Marvel movie and she said she must be really British or UK UK in yeah what is what do you call a person from the UK British British are you a UK UK a UK man I think it's just like depending on where you are from in the UK so if she's from Britain and British okay She's over there. She's across the pond. Um, permanently studying abroad. But I guess she got invited to be in a Marvel movie and she said, quote, I don't like America and I didn't want to live in Georgia for four months. Okay. All these interviews are, you know, when someone does an interview and like they take six quotes out of the interview and then that's like the news cycle for, because Bradley Cooper's interview, I guess was oh, taken right. completely out of context where he said like, I didn't even know if I loved my daughter for a while. You know, right. I was just showers with his dad. Yeah. I was like, I posted on my story. I was like, you got to normalize journaling. Like we need get Bradley Cooper, a diary to write yeah. that in. 
That but also like that's the kind of thing where it's like if I'm sure if we had read the actual article, like it would have made wouldn't sense. Have, wouldn't have blinked twice. Wouldn't have blinked. Those are just like the kind of quotes that you take yeah. out of context, which make like good headlines, which yeah, I personally enjoy the clickbait um, of it all. Um, but I like can't. I'm like so like every time I see that woman, don't even know her name, of course. Like sh- my blood boils you know i hate on people like shitting on what made them famous and where they came from yeah and also just like shitting on things that bring people joy for no reason yeah. so like she is number one on my hit list i would say and i do have a hit list on my phone mm-hmm. i'm not afraid to say it a hit list should i be that <laughs> actually i feel crazy. like maybe but i'm not gonna I, like let me be very clear i'm not i'm not gonna kill anyone okay you have nothing to be afraid i'm not a security threat whatsoever these are just people that i it's basically it's people i hate people i hate and hate is a strong word using it intentionally here okay hey you're entitled you're entitled to that um what else you had um I, my one other thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I think i can answer this i think i can answer this other thing you put in the note uh, by the way did not c- contribute a single word to the note Page That's this week, so no, you always have a lot more I, to say than me. So happy to take the lead. Um, our land feel our land feels real. This thought I had, obviously New York. Everywhere you turn, there's forty five heaping fat black garbage bags filled to the brim and exploding. Yeah, and so forty five times all the steps that you take in a day, so twenty thousand. Multiply that by how many people are in New York? Billion. So a trillion <laughs> massive heaping black garbage bags of poop and like garbage and gross crap. Trash, if you will. I think that's a technical <laughs> term. <laughs> like, how was that all going to one place? And how was that place not overflowing the planet? Uh, I know it is technically, but like I'm talking about even more so like how are we not just living in garbage bags? I don't feel like I don't I don't know why we don't spend trash. I don't know why we don't send trash to space. Like I'm really genuinely confused how there's not another continent that is just for trash. Trash land. Yeah. Elmo and Grouchland vibes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm sure there is. Elmo and Grouch? Oh, yeah. That was one of, that is the greatest. You know, that's Mandy Patinkin. Of course it is. Yeah. Oh, uh, I just got my thumb stuck in something while we were recording. Okay, I cut <laughs> off. I just got really but scared for a second. Where are the landfills? I've never seen one. How many are there? I've seen, I've seen. How are they not at capacity? Oh, no. They're, they're going to be a bunch of, it. I know there's a bunch of trash advocates. I'm just like fully. I do think like something that worth my while and worth like probably a lot of young kids while would be taking a trip to the landfills. Yeah. To see, like, what our contributions are to the world. Yeah. In that yeah. way. I saw this TikTok. Obviously, like, I'm on conspiracy theorist Twitter, like and by no design of my own. So like I'm just being inundated by all of this stuff. But I guess they just found like an abandoned school in Flint, Michigan, filled up with full water bottles. And there's like a lady whose mission it is to like open up all the water bottles and dump them out because water can get trapped inside plastic water bottles like indefinitely. Mm-hmm. So, so her mission is to dump out the water. I was like, hmm, I want to give that to the people of Flint, Michigan, actually, instead of dumping it out. What do I know, though? But Did you ever like have that? that- what gives you anxiety? Thinking about how many water bottles are in trash cans that are full of water. I'm and just it's like, actually going to Google right now. Where are the landfills? Well, there's Trash Island, you know, out Trash like, Island. It's a like a bunch of floating trash in the middle. That's of That's giving the ocean. Muppets movie. Trash Island is is real, and it's a it's 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 like floating, or it's a huge like island of trash floating in the middle of some ocean, and. It's an issue. It's a real issue. Um, but yeah, maybe maybe that would be fun to take a boat trip out there. Spring break on Trash Island. Trash Island 2024. 
I hear it's gorgeous on Trash Island. Topless on Trash Island. Island. <laughs> Girls gone wild at Trash Island edition. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry, I have to Google Trash Island. Yeah, you'll be shocked. Where is it? Which island. which state? Uh no, it's it's not in a state. Oh, it's, it's an in, island. It's an island. Off the coast of. I don't know. It's just in the middle of the ocean, I think. It's huge. Kidding. It's gonna, it's gonna Great freak Pacific you out. Pacific garbage patch. Yeah, that's what it is. Trash Island. Marine debris is litter that ends up in the ocean in season. That's horrible. How do you not know about Trash Island? The Great Pacific. I've never dump. heard of Trash Island. I don't see. I'm saying I don't know a lot about the, the trash space. Yeah, the this trash is space really, is really something is really to write home about, honestly. The patch is actually comprised. Of the Western Garbage Patch located near Japan and the Eastern Garbage Patch located between the U.S. states of Hawaii and California. The Western Garbage Patch, not to be confused with the Eastern Garbage Patch. Exactly. Where warm water from the South Pacific meets up with cooler water from the Arctic zone, acts like a highway that moves debris from what that is bad. That's we bad. Need more, we need more people teaching us about this. Or I guess I could do my own research, but I'd rather someone just tell me. Yeah. I Mark my words, now all my TikToks are going to be about trash. Good. I could I could stand to learn. I have a story. Okay. Um, yesterday Izzy came to drop this mic off for me. And so we went to Sushi Fumi because why not? Um, yeah. And guess who walked in? Who? Joe Curie. Oh, no way. I wouldn't yeah. I would not be able to find Joe Curie in public. I didn't see him because my back was to him, but I think Kat was able to identify him immediately. And he's I'm a I'm a big fan. I love Stranger Things. Love his music. I love going back to Chicago. And um, he's just like, it's just so crazy seeing these people. And like, he like looked normal. He's like normal. He's a that's person. That's what I'm saying. I would, I would be like, oh, that's just like a dude. And he was, I think. you have to wait in line at Sushi Fumi if you don't yeah. get there exactly at 530 to stand in line. Oh, yeah. And he's just, he was waiting in line. Yeah, I feel like when you, go, when you're, when you're like that person, you're like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to skip the line at Sushi Fumi. Like, I got it. I look like every other bitch. I got to wait in but, line. But you know, like Kendall Jenner, like she goes to Sushi Fumi all the time. Justin Bieber goes to Sushi Fumi. Yeah. They don't wait in line. I feel like Joe Curie's a little bit. He's a good, he's a good, humble man. He's a good, yeah, I think so. But also it's a security risk for someone like Justin Bieber to be waiting in line outside totally. Sushi That's Fumi. True. Like, like, I don't think people are going to mob Joe Curie. Right. I don't think, obviously, like I'm not Speak like a joke. I know. Um, but like someone told me the other day, they saw Zendaya here in New York at Trader Joe's getting um, feta cheese. And she was with her security guard and not a single person went up to her. And I'm like, she's she's that level of A-list celebrity where I think that it would be like dangerous for her Wait, to go sorry, to Trader who? Joe's. Zendaya. Oh, Zendaya also like I love her so much. She I don't feel like she's like approachable. Like she's like untouchable to me. Like, just so famous? Mm. Yeah, and also, like, I don't think, like, I think she just, like, really values her space, like, as she should. But, like, I think, like, she kind of makes that clear. And hopefully... Yeah, do you think she gives off the vibe? Boundaries. Yeah, the she's vibe not giving, clear. like, come talk to me. Yeah, I mean, also as a security guard at Trader Joe's. But I just, I don't know. It's so fun to grocery shop. I think that if I was, like, an A-list celebrity, something I would miss most is having my headphones in at the grocery store. Have my new grocery store in, I can't even say. I go to the grocery store when I'm when I'm home. I go to the grocery store like three or four times a week. I love it. Oh, it's my least favorite place in the world. Can oh, never regulate my temperature. Never know what I want. Yeah, Some, one, there's something anxiety inducing about it. I love going to get ingredients. Yeah, I mean, I, God bless you. I know there's just nothing. And also like if you want to, I mean, that's, that's probably why I like New York. Cause I, that's where I go look at people is at the grocery store. Like mm -hmm. I might, I'm, I'm browsing for apples and people. Like I like to look at people. I got that. Which uh, I'm fine. Never looking at anyone. Oh, I love it. I'm that's fine. Just I like looking this, at my phone. This weather in New York right now is so loitery. Like it's loitering weather, you know, it's like, it's like, well, not, it just got really, really cold. Actually, right when you guys left, it's like 40 something degrees and really windy today. And I don't have clothes for that, which sucks. But, um, 
yeah, like my goal over the weekend was to just like sit at a ta- like an open face table, which is like a table where the the chairs are like facing the sidewalk and just loiter. And I did that, and that was really fun. That's nice. What's so sad is like L.A. has changed me in the sense like I grew up in Philadelphia, went to school mm-hmm. in Boston. Um, I looked at the forecast going into the weekend in New York, and it was like 50s, 60s. And I brought my Aritzia Super Puff and wool sweaters and nothing else, which like I can't believe I've become that. But I, I was sweating my dick off all weekend. So uncomfortable. Period. That's the end of that sentence. Yeah, I'm I'm cold. So I need to wear be wearing skiing clothes. I get to go, right? Actually, we need to we need to wrap this up because I have to privilege. go. I have the privilege and honor of going on what's poppin' show in pretty soon. So okay. catch, me, catch me on that. Catch well, me Connor. Well, Brooke. I look forward to seeing you in the bonus. We will have a lot to discuss in the bonus. Oh, yeah. We have a lot to discuss in the bonus. So mm-hmm. we'll see you there. I'll see you in a sec. This week on Close Friends. Hi, you little pig. Oh, so cute. Hello. I just found a crazy secret compartment in my hotel room. Our, our, our G. Oh, Frankie, no. Frankie, no. I'm not like a best man and I'm doing a toast. I'm doing like... I'm, I'm ordaining the wedding. Can I ask you a personal question? Sign up on TMGstudios.tv to watch the full bonus episode.